Hi guys, welcome to this session on Microsoft Visio. In this module, I want to show you how you can use blocks with perspective and adjust those to create a diagram as you can see on the screen. So basically, these four are blocks. These are not blocks with perspective, but I've just added a different stencil so I can utilize these and these and these. So what I'm going to do is recreate this diagram from scratch so you can see how I did it. So let's just get rid of that. Control W, don't save. File new. In fact, I can do there because I've already been in it. It's, it's in there. But just so you know where it is, it's new. And it was under education. And this is the one I selected. So I'll create that one. Get myself a blank piece of paper and change the orientation to landscape now when you do a diagram with perspective you have this vanishing point on the screen now what's this all about if i bring a block onto the screen in fact i'll bring a couple on so i'll just copy that control key and then drag let go so the vanishing point if you move this I won't move, that's just got one selected. So if I don't have anything selected and then I move this, you can see that they respond, the shapes respond to wherever you're putting this, this vanishing point. Now if you do click on a particular shape and then select this yellow circle, you can maneuver or reposition that individual shape by moving this. So I'm just going to put that back there. In terms of the depth of these shapes, if you've got shape data active, I'll just right click data shape data active, you can change the depth of these shapes. You've got a little drop down arrow there. If I move that up, put that to 10%. And that's how you can manipulate these shapes. So what I will do is I'll put this in the middle. Oh, sorry, I need to just deselect one. Put the whole thing into the middle, like so, and just get rid of these shapes and bring them on again. Well, that one's okay, that's what I want. So I want four of these. Now, I haven't got the grid on, so I'm going to put the grid on. And then um, I want four of these, so I'm just going to use my control key to copy these across. You can set the set them up like that. It's going to come down a little bit. Now it'll come down a bit. Right, it's happy with that. Now I typed into these bin one. As soon as you type in Visio, as you know, everything zooms up, which can be slightly off-putting when you first do it, but it sh zooms back down as soon as you click off the shape bin 3 and then bin 4. Now I need to zoom back out. So now what I had, I had some arrows, the, not these, these are arrows with perspective, you can see the depth of them there and even if I change that down to 10% that is not what I want to see and let me move the vanishing point yeah, so rather than do all this, that, that would work for what I want actually, but I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to leave that there, delete that, and go and get a stencil from the general. I want um, blocks raised. So you can see I've got that one ticked, but block, blocks raised. And that will bring these in, which gives you the arrows like so. One arrow it picks up the same theme. That these are on. The themes are just. Let's change this theme. So you, that's all. That's that's all that was. That's that theme that it was on. So now I'm just going to copy that across. To point to each one of these. Uh, I'm not going to spend ages lining everything up, but you would line everything up in real time. So then back to. Um, I needed a line across, that's what I wanted, a straight line, horizontal bar, that'll do. 
and then just bring that across the screen. And then the last thing was this frame, which just is I'm going to use this to type in the waiting area. So if I just type waiting area in there. Now when I click away from that, that totally disappears. So I need to go back and change the font size on that to make it quite large. I'll go for 48 and I also need to make it not white, black, so you can see it. And then you can see that there. And then this one had barrier. And again, this one needs to change size and color. So let's put this to 24. 30 let's try that yeah that works okay so that's um, basically how you create that diagram now if I move this VP point around I'm going to call it it should only affect the blocks with perspective not these other shapes so if I go up they'll all go up and keep going up as you move this VP point they're all following wherever I point. And now you're starting to get into trouble by pushing it over there. So I'll put it back down into the middle. And remember, if you click on any in any individual one, you can um, maneuver it. But not this one, look, it's not there. But if I click on that one, it is there. So I can move that one around by itself. And as I've already stated, you can create or change the depth of these. So they become quite long and you might want to push that up so it's doing that sort of shape but you would do that normally for all of these shapes in this sort of diagram where they're all supposed to be sat next to each other you would do it for all of the shapes you move the VP point for them all so I'll just put that back down to 10 so it's the same as the rest and then the last thing that I had on this diagram was a background so over to the insert uh, not insert design sorry backgrounds and I pick the world which everybody picks now that creates a background page there's page one there's the background page so if you want to type anything you have to do it on the background page and I also want a title borders and titles and this one and again that is a background page so you have to come into the background to do any editing on it so I'll call this voting process and the date and time is okay and the page number is okay so if I go back to page one it says page one voting process and there's your diagram so that's a visual diagram with block perspectives and a combination of other shapes from other stencils that's the end of this session thank you for your time